Hi there folks. Out at the gun club today to see how these Savage 4 tenders pattern in a 20 gauge gun depending upon the choke tube that's used. I've got my Baykal here. It's got screw in chokes. And I've got a selection of chokes. We've got a cylinder, improved cylinder, modified, and full choke. We're going to use these two and a half inch 410 shells by Winchester. These are some old compression form shells. And we're going to see how those do. And this is a 28 inch barreled gun. And I'm going to shoot the patterns from probably about 15 yards. Keep it pretty close so that uh, I can get all the pellets on these relatively small pieces of paper. Let's see how this works out. To be consistent, I'm going to fire all the shells from the bottom barrel. And we'll start off with the cylinder choke because one can reasonably expect for that to give the, uh, the biggest patterns. Okay, first shell is a first shot with the cylinder bore tube in the bake house. Alright, next choke up is improved cylinder. Alright, the next tube up is modified. Okay, last tube, full choke. Okay, we're back from the uh, shooting range, and I've got my four test pattern targets here. These were fired at uh, a range of 15 yards with the Savage 4 tenor using a two and a half inch Winchester uh, 410 shell loaded with number nine shot. Now I've drawn a uh, an 18 inch diameter circle around the uh, densest part of each pattern in an attempt to uh, sort of quantify the number of uh, pellets that are inside and outside those circles. And we've got a pattern shot with each of the, uh, the choke tubes that I put in the Baykal. The cylinder, improved cylinder, modified and full. So this is the uh, this is the pattern which was shot with the improved cylinder choke and of all the pellets that are on the paper I would assume that the vast majority of the pellets did hit the paper. There might be one or two that got off it. Uh, we've got a total of 34 pellets outside of the circle. Now I drew these circles after shooting the uh, the patterns because it's very difficult to uh, center a pattern precisely enough on a target, it makes more sense to actually draw the circle around the uh, the pattern afterwards and to sort out the densities. But uh, you can see the dispersion of the uh, pellets here, hopefully. Hopefully this shows up on the, uh, the video. We've got a fairly dense section through here. Bit of a hole here, bit of a hole here. It's a little thinner around the top and the bottom but a very dense sort of center section here. And like I said, there are 34 pellets outside of that 18 inch circle. The, uh, the next choke that we used was the improved cylinder. And we've actually got a, a slightly bigger uh, pattern with the improved cylinder than we got with the cylinder. There are a total of 59 pellets outside of the 18 inch circle. But we do have a little bit better uh, pattern distribution. There's less kind of less holes in this one. We still have that strong sort of center band here. We do have a bit of a gap on this side, but it's much better filled out. And there are a few more pellets around the periphery. So that would actually be a little bit uh, easier pattern to hit with. 
and yet it's still reasonably dense and should be effective. So 59 pellets outside of the 18 inch circle on that one. Moving on up to the uh, modified choke, we've got uh, 49 pellets outside of the 18 inch circle and we've got kind of a better pattern yet than the uh, improved cylinder and the cylinder. There are very few sparse sections in this pattern. Good even distribution of hits. A little bit of thinness on the uh, the right hand side but basically pretty well filled out pattern for a 410. You got to remember this is only a half ounce of shot so there's not a lot of pellets to work with. So 49 pellets outside of the 18 inch circle. And finally, we've got the uh, full choke pattern. See this torn part here is where the wad actually hit the, uh, the pattern paper. So 47 pellets outside of the 18 inch circle with the full choke in the bakehouse. And once again, we've got a fairly decent density here. One sort of a thin spot over on the, uh, the right hand side, which seems to be kind of a theme with all these. But basically, I guess if I had to uh, kind of give you an opinion on using the choke tubes in the uh, the Baikal with those Savage 4 tenor short tubes I would have to say that the choke tubes do not have a really significant impact on the pattern. They uh, fine-tune it to some degree but they certainly don't they don't really affect the uh, the range of the gun a whole lot. You're not really going to get uh, a more effective pattern at any particular distance. These patterns are they're very close to being equal. So it, it would appear that the uh, the choke tubes just are not a big a big game changer with those short tubes. Might be a little different if you were using a uh, for instance a 20 gauge adapter in a 12 gauge gun. There's a much closer fit between the actual shot column and the barrel um, versus with the 20 gauge and the uh, the 410. There's quite a vast difference between the shot column and uh, the wad coming out of the 410 barrel and going out into the 20 gauge barrel. The velocities that uh, you get from these short tubes are surprisingly good. They're actually uh, on par with a full length barrel. I did do some uh, chronographing but the uh, footage I took of it didn't really turn out all that well. I may uh, do that again and post those results as a separate video. But uh, anyway Hopefully uh, that's of some interest to some folks. And uh, if you do have a chance to come across these little Savage 410 tubes, by all means, um, you know, pick up a set if they're reasonably priced. You will probably be fairly happy with the uh, the purchase. They are uh, quite a useful little thing to have. Good fun for shooting skeet and also pretty useful for uh, upland game hunting, training new shooters pest control, and so forth. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. We will talk to you later.